the news source today here on this Friday morning, Black Friday. I'm Mark Mullins. Hundreds gathered in Corvallis to honor big number 92. Senator John McCain is expected to make that announcement today. That's according to a source close to the senator. A lot of folks on the roads this morning and a lot of folks in the mall too, right, Jordan? In Cresswell, even after the pavement on Interstate 5 seemed to be clear, one driver lost control, sliding his minivan into a ditch and almost ending up in a pond. New this morning, we are hearing from a first grader who got hit by a school bus and lived to talk about it. Now the university's athletic department is hoping people cash in on a new collector's item. We'll pick up that breaking news from overnight Oregon and the rest of the U.S. West Coast under a tsunami warning right now. That warning had been extended overnight to include Washington State and parts of Canada. Now our Coos County Bureau Chief Hannah Olson has been up overnight watching what's been happening as the cities prepare. We've already got some of those shelters that are filling up this morning, Hannah, but you had a chance to learn some new information within the last 20 minutes, correct? Absolutely, Mark, yeah. Our first way to save, try spacing out your trips to the store. Challenge yourself to go to the supermarket every other week. Here's an easy way to save between three and five bucks a day. Make your own coffee. Once the fire crews cleared away, it was time to start the cleanup. One of the first orders of business, replacing the broken doors and broken glass. Colin Houck has been raising his little boy, Silas, in Eugene's Whitaker neighborhood for years. Loves it here. But... He can't ignore the problems. I'm cleaning up trash, I'm cleaning up beer bottles, I'm cleaning up liquor bottles. You know, we, uh, we found 30 needles back in our alley. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, I mean, I'm just absolutely tired of it. He even posted his concerns on Mayor Kitty Piercy's Facebook page, knowing that she also had a home in the Whitaker. And Mayor Piercy wrote back, saying the police department has been meeting with neighbors to hammer out ways to curb the illicit drug use in and around Scobert Park. I wanted her to tell me that, that she's actively looking for solutions to address this issue. You know, I mean, I don't understand why this is the default neighborhood for the indigent drug addict traffic here. While our cameras were rolling, a squad of EPD bike officers cruised through the neighborhood, beelining through the park. <laughs> But the city's Parks and Open Space Department is getting involved too. To try to eliminate areas that make it comfortable for people to do illicit activities. Part of the city's plan involves cutting back some trees and brush on the west side of the park to eliminate some of the cubby hole areas. Extra fencing will go up in sections of the park to eliminate other hideout spots. Most of the changes that are going to occur to are, are to improve visibility. Um, to help EPD better patrol the park. The parks and police departments have been collaborating. So eventually, maybe Colin Howe can enjoy one of his most basic rights, raising his son in a safe neighborhood. In Eugene, Mark Mullins, News Source 16. It's early morning on Main Street in Springfield's Thurston area. We get up and we try to get out here by um, 5 after, sometimes earlier. That's because Vivi Kloster has to put her precious cargo on a school bus that arrives at 813. She walks Jared to the stop every day just to make sure he's safe. I don't like this Main Street. That's why I'm here. And when Jared's bus arrives, the driver turns on the warning lights, opens the door, and Jared climbs the steps. But you can hear a car honk the horn off screen. During this stop, at least one car in the oncoming lane failed to stop, and therein lies the problem. Drivers committing something called stop arm violations. And so a lot of them don't, don't see the lights. A lot of them are not paying attention. They, they miss the lights. And others think because, like Main Street out here is a five-lane road, and they're in the opposing curb lane, and we're in the curb lane, that they're not required to stop. But it's the law. If the bus is stopped, this stop sign is extended, and these lights are flashing, motorists must stay put. And according to the Springfield School District Transportation Department, roughly 25 drivers a day in Springfield fail to obey it. And that creates a real dangerous situation for the, for the students we're trying to load. In fact, as our new source 16 cameras were fixed on this stop school bus, an SUV drove by in the oncoming lane, and a Lane County motorcycle deputy pulled over the woman for not stopping for that school bus. Working with a Texas company, the Spring Springfield School District took part in a pilot program that would install special devices on the front and rear of buses that would make them more visible during routine stops. I put them in high areas where we had high incidence of, of uh, stop arm violations and it went from you know 20 or 30 a day down to almost zero. That school transportation supervisor Jim Horton. He says the new LED light system is more pronounced, brighter, and closer to the eye level of most car drivers, making the warning signs hard to miss or ignore. Uh, the buses that we have out that have these signs on them 
again, the incidence of, of red light violations are, are way down. Last year, Springfield schools added five buses with this LED warning light system, just a small fraction of its fleet, which means even though high-tech improvements are on the way, it's still up to drivers to be alert themselves and follow the law to keep every parent's precious cargo safe. In Springfield, Mark Mullins, News Source 16. And this is News Source Today. Congratulations to Governor Mitt Romney, winner of the 2012 Iowa caucuses. It is breaking news in politics from overnight. Iowa is done. Next stop, New Hampshire. Mitt Romney comes out on top, and one presidential candidate is now seriously thinking of dropping out. An Oregon father and his kids went for a day of fun in the snow, and they ended up missing. Thanks to a search plane, they're fine this morning, and the dad is now offering some advice for other Oregon families. We'll have that story. And later, so many bees. They were swarming in the walls and the ceiling, and they started claiming more of one family's house. What they did when they started feeling the sting. It is a Wednesday morning, 5 o'clock. Welcome to News Source today. It's great to have you here with us. I'm Mark Mullins. Kelly Warner is off this morning. Last day of the Bro Show. Kelly Warner returns tomorrow. So let's get your first alert. Broadcast from <laughs> meteorologist Jordan Steele in the Weather Center. Hey, Jordan. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Good morning, Mark. It is two minutes past five o'clock. We've got some breaking political news from overnight in the race for the White House. Mitt Romney is the winner of the Iowa Republican presidential caucuses. He just barely snagged it. He eked past Rick Santorum with just eight votes more. The Iowa Republican Party announced the results early this morning, saying Romney won with 30,015 votes to Santorum's 30,007 votes. Well, this means the first battle in the presidential race is over. The top three, Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, and Ron Paul. But there were three other candidates, too, and at least one of them is considering calling it quits now that the results in Iowa are in. This is what an Iowa caucus looks like. Neighbors in a room talking politics, trying to pick a presidential candidate. And this morning, we've learned the man who ran against Barack Obama in the 2008 presidential race will publicly support Mitt Romney for president. Senator John McCain is expected to make that announcement today. That's according to a source close to the senator. McCain will travel to New Hampshire to make the endorsement. It is the opposite of what happened four years ago. McCain won New Hampshire over Romney, and then Romney chose to endorse McCain. It is five minutes past five o'clock. A young man who had so much life ahead of him died from a gunshot wound, and Lane County investigators think it was an accident. The DA and the medical examiner are looking into the shooting. Deputies and Mohawk Valley fire crews responded to a 911 call. The anguish is over for an Oregon family after a search plane spots a missing father and two kids. They were found near Timothy Lake Dam, deep in the Mount Hood National Forest. Rescuers could not have asked for a better outcome. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office says 33-year-old Stuart Schmidt, his son, and his daughter were seen from the air on Tuesday afternoon. Search crews then met them, confirmed they were in good condition, and took them to reunite them with other family members. Schmidt stopped to pass on some advice that he learned firsthand. Bring the proper gear when you go out into the mountain. Don't, uh, don't surpass your vehicle's abilities. I was just scared that the car went over a ravine because the scary thing for me was not knowing where the car was. On Monday, Schmidt took his, took his children for a day in the snow in Mount Hood National Forest just outside Estacada. They were due back that night but never made it. Family and friends poured over maps and sent volunteer searchers in all directions until the airplane crew spotted the family. The Oregon Corrections Department says the state expects to recover much of the $18,000 it spent on drugs. Those drugs were bought to execute a death row inmate. Governor John Kitzhopper canceled that scheduled December execution of murderer Gary Haugen. Kitzhopper also announced in late November that Oregon would not execute any other condemned inmates during his tenure in office. He called Oregon's death penalty, quote, compromised and inequitable. The Corrections Department says a reverse wholesaler has already retrieved the drugs. It's not yet clear how much of the restocking fee the state will have to pay.